Maganda umaga po sa inyo lahat. It's me again. Ganyan po talaga nangyari. <laughs> Pero while I'm taking care of this, ako po ay magpapasalamat din sa Panginoon. This is just going to be a very short testimony. Uh, kanina po, bago po kami manalangin siya sa loob, nagsabi na po ako na medyo masama ang pakiramdam ko. Uh, medyo nga po masama ang pakiramdam ko. Actually, kagabi pa po yun. Pero iyon nga po, naisama ako sa panalangin kanina. At uh, talaga pong napakabuti na ating Panginoon. Maasahan natin ang kanyang kabutihan na noon at ang kanyang kapangyarihan. Dahil ako po, paglabas namin doon, wala na po yung sakit ng tiyang ko. Sometimes God answers very quickly. Sometimes He makes us wait. But however He answers us, it's always a perfect answer. Am I right? Okay. Marami salamat po talaga sa Panginoon. Alam niyo po itong aking message ay parang kasunod po ito o kadugtong nung naging message po ni Pastora Maming. Magkahawig. Yung kanya, laging handa, maging handa. Ang akin po, are you prepared for heaven? Actually, in my copy here, ang nakasulat po, are you prepared to go home to heaven? And ang nakakatawa po, kanina po yung declaration ng ating Panginoon at tayo po ay nag-worship. Diba? Yung paghahanda uli sa pagdating ng ating Panginoon. At uh, ito po, ire-reiterate ko po sa inyo sa pamamagitan po ng mensahe natin sa umagang ito. The title of today's message is, Are You Prepared to Go Home to Heaven? Um, ayos ba? Okay. Mahiling ko nga po ang lahat na tumayo at buksan po ang inyong mga Biblia sa so John 14:1 to 4. Tagalog man po, Ingles, ang inyong mga Biblia, sabay-sabay po tayo magbasa. If you've already found it, makibasa na We have a copy there. Let's read all together. Let not your hearts, mga friends, mga kapatid, magbasa po tayo. <laughs> All together, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way to where I am going. At iyan po ang teksto para sa mensahe ng Panginoon ngayon. Makakaupo na po kayo. Sabi po dito sa ating binasa, matagal na po na hinihahanda ng ating Panginoong Jesus ang bahay na kanyang, ta- ang bahay na kanyang ama para po sa ating pagsama doon. Pero, tayo po ba ay handa na pumunta doon sa inihandang lugar na po ng ating Panginoong Jesus? Do we walk on the way to where Jesus is? Kumbaga, nasa tamang ruta po ba tayo, mga Kristiyano? Kasi ngayon po, ang dami nagpo-profess na sila yung mga Kristiyano. Pero pag tinignan po natin ang kanilang mga buhay, eh, maski ang mundo magtatanong, si Kristo nga po ba ang kanilang sinusunod? Sa umagang ito po, mag-pay attention po tayo dun sa bahay po ng ating Panginoon. Kasi heaven. So, in, iniisip siguro na iba, o ano ngayon? Heaven. But heaven is not just the house of the Lord, it is also paradise, and it is also a kingdom. Dito po tayo sa Pilipinas, madalas po i-point out dati ng aking ama, uh, ang Pilipinas po ay devoid of royal protocols. Wala po tayo mga ganyan. And um, ang meron po tayo nakikinaganyan, nabaw, ayan, sa British royal family, and uh, you also see that in Japan and other European countries. Pero tayo po dito, kasi mga tribo-tribo po di pa dito sa Pilipinas, meron po tayo presidente. And uh, for the longest time, we were treated as slaves. And uh, maski po parang naging colony po tayo ng, ng, ng Spain, eh, hindi naman po talaga nila tayo inako. They, uh, they didn't teach us the Spanish language. Kaya nga po, ang dami nagtatanong, oh, na-conquer pala ng Spain ng Pilipinas, bakit hindi na mahusay mag-ano? mag uh, magkastila ang mga Pilipino. Hindi. They, uh, aba, ano to? Rizal Studies. <laughs> ano to? Uh, hindi po itinuro sa atin yung kanilang lengguahe kasi Indio nga daw po tayo. Pero kung iisipin tayo mga Pilipino da- dahil nga wala tayong protocols, medyo ang problema po natin, wala, medyo maba- ma- mahina ang ating sense of reverence. Alam niyo po ba yung reverence? Hindi po parang yung respeto, um, pag-recognize ng authority sa isang tao o sa organisasyon. 
hirap po ang mga Pilipino diyan. Hindi po katulad sa uh, sa katulad sa British royal family sa Japan. Um, siguro po pagkukumpara sa British royal family po, you will observe that uh, even if they're under attack right now, uh, the queen when she was alive, the current king, the king in training, the queen in training and the other working royals, they do not engage in mudslinging dialogue. Pag sinabi natin mudslinging dialogue, hindi po parang even if other people are bringing out their dirty laundry, hindi po sila pumapatol doon. And whatever answers they provide, they're just very vague. Ganun lang po, kasi importante ang exclusivity, importante na, na may maintain nila yung kanilang royal stature. At isa pa po, halimbawa po sa Japan, Sa sobrang taas ng pagtingin nila sa, sa bawat isa, uh, nakakaingit po yung kanilang civic-mindedness. Yung pagiging neighborly rin po nila. Ganun po yung respeto nila sa kanilang mga uh, kapitbahay or yung mga other Japanese people around them. Uh, I watched this um, very short documentary. I'm a Japanophile po kasi mahilig ako sa mga, mga palabas na tungkol sa Japan. Sa Japan po pala, if you clean in front of your house, kailangan isama mo yung mga katabi mo. Kasi that's not being very neighborly if you don't do that. Um, dito po sa atin, naglinis ka ng harapan ng bahay mo. Mamaya, pinagtapunan ng kapitbahay mo. <laughs> Di po ba? Or pinaihian to sa aso niyo. Doon po sa amin, ako. Hmm, nakakagalit. Uh, Pamisa, nililinis mo, meron ng nakasulat, bawal umihi dito, bawal magtapon dito. Aba, doon pa talaga. <laughs> e yun talagang tinutumbok ng mga Pilipino kung saan nila gagawin yung mga, mga hindi nila dapat ginagawa. At isa pa po, nakikita rin po ito sa mga bahay sambahan ngayon, lalo na sa panahon ngayon. Kasi comfort is such a, parang it's, it's held to a high standard na, kumbaga. Meron po akong kaibigan. Uh, she belongs to this, uh, to one of the mega churches dito po sa ating bansa. At nun sa kanilang church, meron po silang cell group. Doon po sa kanilang cell group, ay paminsan nakikita-kita sila sa mga cafe o kaya sa bahay ng cell group leader nila. And there is this one member na kaibigan naman daw po nila would come to the cell group meeting to study the word of the Lord naka spaghetti strap na kanyart nyarts ganun po ang kanyang gayak so sa sila tipo ayos na andun naman sa bahay eh di ba andun naman kayo sa bahay at saka madalas na ni naman nila makita na ganun ang gayak ng mga kababaihan ko saan-saan eh kaya lang po lumboy tao sa church ganun ang gayak sabi niya beach magbi-beach ka iyon eh, na po medyo it's got it's going to be a bit of an issue when you dress up a certain way at uh, nakalimutan mo na sa bahay ng Panginoon, dito pa lang sa lupa, sino po ba ang kinakatagpo natin? Diyos Ama, di po ba? At ano po ang ating Diyos Ama? Siya ay King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Not only that, He created the heavens and the earth. He will not, I mean, the kings of this world will not compare to the majesty of our Lord, ang ating Creator. So, dito po sa umaga ito, um, Pag, ano, makikita po natin na when it comes to appropriate behavior, ay medyo po lacking tayo. Lacking tayo. Kaya uh, kasama po sa paghahanda natin sa pagpunta sa bahay ng ating ama, yung paghahanda, yung pagsaliksik rin po natin sa ating mga sarili, kung tayo po ba ay nabubuhay, nahanda na tayo na maging co-heirs po ng ating Panginoong Jesus at true heir of heaven. So, sa so umagang ito, mananaliksik po tayo sa ating mga sarili. Tayo po ba ay naniniwala lamang, pero hindi naman nabubuhay sa banal na pamantayan ng ating Diyos, which is really required of us to enter the kingdom of God. And, uh, or kung nado na po ba tayo sa tamang ruta. For this, simulan po natin, what is heaven really like? Kasi baka mamaya, hindi nyo alam ko ano yung itsura ng heaven eh. Although there are, recently, when I was on Instagram, meron pong shinare doon na parang AI na interpretation ng heaven. Maganda po siya, pero uh, hindi po ako ganun kateki, hindi ko po ma-share sa inyo. So let us just go with 
What is heaven according to the Bible? Let us start with number one. Heaven is built for worship. According to Hebrews 12, 22 to 23, but you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to all the spirits of the righteous made perfect. And the mention of angels and all. When we think of angels, we also think about, you know, a glorious chorus singing to the Lord all the time. Dipo ba? Kaya nga po yung Christmas natin, di ba? Angels we have heard on high. And yung, ano po, yung imagery po noon, may mga angels na nagkakantahan, di po ba? Ganun po ang kalakaran sa heaven. Um, angels are always in glorious chorus. And when we go there, we're going to be like the angels. We're also going to worship our Lord God with them. Kaya nga po, ang ating Panginoong Jesus ay naghahanap na po ng Ang ating Diyos ay naghahanap na po ng mga true worshipers. Katulad po na nakasulat na sa John 22 to 24. You worship what you do not know, but the hour is coming and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. In heaven, worship is no longer going to be like a very short segment of a two to three hour worship service. It's going to be worship nonstop. Iyon po ang mangyayari sa heaven. Number two, heaven is a place of unity. Oh, kakalipas lang po ng ating eleksyon, team unity. Pero iba po ang unity sa heaven. Meron po tayong kanta dito sa church natin. Na it goes, pasensya po, ah, hindi, ano, hindi, hindi ko na po kaya kumanta. It goes, every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor. Kanta! Hindi, loko lang. <laughs> giving, play, uh, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Galing po yun sa Bible, when you turn to Revelation 7, 9 to 10, ito po ang sinasabi. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Sa heaven po ang totoong ano, team unity. Hindi po dito. Hindi po dito. Wala pong pagpapanggap. Sa totoo lang po yung pag, ano, pag-claim ng team unity po dito. Ang kinaklaim lang po doon ay tolerance. Ang fasad lang po ay unity. Alam niyo po ba ang tolerance? It grows weaker over time. Diba? Napupuno rin tayo eventually. Kaya yung tolerance for each other na tipong it's masking itself as unity, it will go away eventually. Pero po sa heaven, there's going to be true unity. Want to know how this is possible? Sabi po, this is because Christians in heaven have already gone through a screening process, hindi po ba? Where faith proved more worth than gold. Diba? Sinusubukan po yung ating pananampalataya. O tipong tanso lang ba yan? O gold, which maintains its, uh, uh, which in, maintains its quality. Maski subject mo sa fire. It's still going to be gold and it's going to be even purer. Sabi po sa 1 Peter 7. Uh, 7? No. 1 Peter 1, 7. Um, yan nga po, yung ating faith ay susubukan at makikita kung tipong kasing halaga po ba siya ng gold. It maintains its, uh, its uh, quality whether it's subjected to fire. Yung ating po pananampalataya, saan po ba yung sinasubject? Madalas po sa pagdurusa. Ang mga nakikita po natin, mga talagang merong pananampalataya na, na, which has proven to be worth more than gold. Yung mga martyrs po, hindi po ba? Yung mga kinikwento po noon na mga kristyano na nagkikita-kita sa loob ng kuweba at sinilaban yung loob ng kuweba, isinara. Tipong wala po nag, ano, wala pong nag-attempt na lumabas pa or tumakas pa. Kasi God is worth dying for. Kung nasasabi nga na the Philippines is worth dying for, ang ating Panginoon is worth dying for. Mas higit. Kasi ang ating Panginoon na hindi tayo dinidisappoint. 
Kaya po pagdating po natin sa pearly gates of heaven, ang lahat po ng mga totoong Kristiyano will be filled with the Lord's glory. Therefore, the weight of what other people think, yung mga personal interests, yung mga ulterior motives, wala na po yun. Ano po ang magse-separate sa atin kung wala na yung mga bagay na iyon? Kaya, sa heaven po, ang totoong team unity. Hindi po dito yon. Hindi po sa Pilipinas, lalong-lalo na. At pangatlo po, heaven is majestic. Ito na po talaga yung ano, kingdom ambiance. Uh, di ba? Ambiance. I like that word. God will reveal His complete glory in heaven. And it's nothing like we've ever seen before. Sabi po sa Psalms 29, 3 and 4, Giniginawa ko sa totoo lang. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Giniginawa ko. Nanginginig yung chan ko. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. And the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. Let's follow this up with Revelation 11:19. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and a great hail. Alam niyo po ba when it thunders, what do we do when it thunders? Di ba po we cower? Kung nasa loob ka nga ng bahay, nagugulantang ka pa eh, di ba? And sometimes when it thunders, you also see lightning. And for the voice of the Lord to sound that way, how can we not be humbled? How can we not realize how much greater our God is? Kung tipong ganito po ang description sa kapangyarihan po na ating Panginoon. Boses niya pa lang po ito, ah. hindi pa po ito yung ano, kumpletong kapangyarihan ng ating Diyos. And the beautiful thing about this is in our humble state, we wouldn't be able to stop ourselves from praising and glorifying Him. It's going to be a lot different. Here, we cower out of fear. But in heaven, fear will be no more because we know that we are in the glorious love of our Lord. And that's, all, that's not all to the majesty of heaven. Sabi po dito, there's no darkness na doon sa kaharian po ng ating Panginoon. Ayon nga po sa Revelation 22, 4 and 5. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of a sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. In this passage, it's not just physical darkness na pinapoint out po dito, na mawawala na doon sa kaharian po na ating Diyos. Kasama po dito yung dark times. Ano po ba yung dark times? Yung mga paghihirap natin, yung mga kasalanan natin na nagagawa, mga pagdurusa, kabigatan, kakulangan, yung mga paghihinagpis. At ang aking pong favorite Filipino vocabulary word, kasiphayuan. O oh, diba? Kasiphayuan. Talaga sinaunang salita po iyon. Narinig ko po iyon sa aking ina. Kasi alam niyo po, mahilig kaming ako, daddy ko, tsaka si mommy. When we, our house was uh, getting renovated, um, magkakasama po kami sa isang kwarto kasi nga ginagawa yung mga ibang parte ng aming tahanan. So, mahilig kami manood ng mga kingdom drama. At isa diba sa mga pinanood natin yung Isan. Bako po siya naging hari, ang dami niya pong kasiphayuan sa buhay. Ayan, alam niyo na. You can use it in a sentence. So, ayan, kasiphayuan. Mawawala na po yan sa kingdom ng ating Panginoon. And uh, isa pa, kailangan ko po ito isali. Another aspect to the majesty of heaven would have to be the crowns that are waiting for us. Ano-ano nga, pa, ano, ano nga po ba ang mga crowns na ito? I will not elaborate so much, ha? Um, kasi nakasulat naman po yung verse na pinagkuhaan sa kanila. At saka very self-explanatory po yung mga verses na, na nagpa-pertain po to sa mga crowns. Ito yung victor's crown which we can find in 1 Corinthians 9, 25-27. Okay, so in the victor's crown, which is um, discussed in 1 Corinthians 9, 25 to 27, it says here, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. The second one is the crown of rejoicing, also known as the soul winner's crown. We can find this in 1 Thessalonians 2.19. 
Sabi po dito, For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when He comes? Is it not you? Ang, ang Apostle Paul po ang nagsasalita dito. He was talking to the church of Thessalonica. And the next one is the crown of righteousness. Sabi po sa uh, 2 Timothy 4.8, Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge will award, uh, award to me on that day, <clears throat> excuse me, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The fourth one is the crown of life. And there are two verses here. James 1.12 says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Having stood the test, the person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And Revelation 2.10, do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful, even to the point of death. I will give you life as your victor's crown. And the last one is the crown of glory. And when a chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. So, may mga naghihintay po na corona sa mga sumusunod po sa ating Panginoon. Sa kanyang kaharian, nakahanda na po iyon. So ano po yung mga pinagdaraanan natin dito? Ayan, kasi payuan nga po, di ba? <laughs> kasi payuan, mga, yung mga dark times po, they will cease to matter once we get to heaven. And the fourth one, na description po, ng ating, uh, ng kingdom of God, heaven has a white motif. I thought a bit about that. Parang gusto ko siyang hindi isali <laughs> last time, nung pinag-aaralan ko to. Kasi sabi ko, parang ang, ang babaw. But uh, when I looked into the word of the Lord, uh, importante naman po itong description na ito, yung white motif ng heaven. Kasi I want you to picture how white is a color of confidence, of purity, faithfulness, and truth, and thus the color of heaven. The victorious armies of God are dressed in white, and so are the horses. Sabi po sa Revelation 19, 11 to 14, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice, he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe, dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine white linen. Fine linen, white and clean rather. Alam niyo po ba yung linya ng mga confident fighters? Yung sinasabi po na, I won't even break a sweat. Diba? I won't even break a sweat. It's another way of saying that I am so confident in my abilities. I am so confident of victory. And it will be easy. So, I will not break a sweat. I will not even get dirty. Naalala niyo po yung laban ni Manny Pacquiao at ni Ricky Hatton. Do you remember yung laban na yun? Oo, karamihan ng mga taga-church nagmamadali na umuwi nun eh. <laughs> Kasi maunang-una, mahirap na maghanap ng ano, sasakyan. At saka yun nga, hinahabol po yung laban ni Pacquiao. Sabi po dun sa ano, yung mga commentaries. Sabi niyo, tapos na. Kasi second round pa lang eh, di po ba? Hindi pa tayo nagiinit. Hindi pa tayo nakakasuntok na akala natin ano, kasama tayo dun sa laban. Pero tapos na po yung laba. Hindi, hindi pa nga po yata pinagpawisan si Manny eh. Bulagta na si Hatton eh. At uh, nakaka-disappoint man po yung, ano, <laughs> yung outcome. Kasi lalo na yung mga nag-pay-per-view. Hindi po ba? Lalo na yung pumunta pa na Las Vegas o kung saan man yun. Um, sayang, di ba? Sayang. Tapos tayo nga nagmamadali pa tayo. I remember when we actually had to return in the afternoon para po sa afternoon service. Ang, ang reaksyon mo nun lahat, tapos na, agad, yun, di ba parang sayang, di ba parang pinagkukulo ng ano, matinding marketing, ganyan. Of course, a lot of money went into that. Eh, Pacquiao definitely earned a lot of money, but a lot of the spectators there were like, ay, sayang, tapos agad. Pero it's going to be a lot like that in heaven. Di ba parang the devil won't have anything on our God and on us. Kasi ang ating pong Diyos ay victorious na. In heaven, there won't be any blows that will yield blemishes. Kaya nga po, di ba, mamimaintain ang purity. 
there will not be any blow that will yield imperfections and dirt. Therefore, there will be nothing to nitpick at. This perfectly indicates that everything is clean and has been made clean by Jesus. Kaya rin po why the motif natin kapag communion Sunday, which is on Sunday, by the way, we remember the purification of sins when our Savior Jesus Christ conquered death three days after dying on the cross of Calvary for the sins of mankind. Number five, heaven is dazzling. Alam niyo po nung 90s, isa po sa mga keywords ay ano, bedazzle. Yan. There was even a movie called Bedazzled. That was the process of yung bedazzle. It's basically a process of turning something drab into fab. Hanggang ngayon, ano pa yun? Turn drab into fab, ganyan. At nung nauso po yung home TV shopping, naku, lokong-loko po ako doon kasi there was this product, ang tawag sa kanya bedazzle or bedazzler. It's like a stapler that uh, you use to um, staple. Staple like uh, rhinestones or gemstones and other sparkly embellishments and clothing and other accessories. And you can do that with that bedazzler for only 3,999 Philippine pesos. Diba? So call now. Tumawag lang ako, pero hindi, hindi ako naka-order. <laughs> Mali. <laughs> Tsaka 1997 pa yata yun. In heaven, bedazzling is not necessary. Sabi po na description sa ating, uh, sa ating Biblia, Revelation 21, 19 to 21, sabi po dito, uh, The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper. I have never seen jasper. Sa totoo lang po. The second, sapphire. The third, agate. The fourth, emerald. The fifth, onyx. Sixth, ruby. The seventh, chrysolite. Pinagtrabahuhan yun ni Ate Yen. Chrysolite, di ba? <laughs> uh, the eighth, beryl. The ninth, topaz. The tenth, turquoise. The eleventh, jacinth. And the twelfth, amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each of the gates made of a single pearl. And the, city street, uh, and the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. I have never seen gold na para siyang transparent glass. Kasi po ang mga gold na nakikita natin ngayon, 14K, 12K, 18K, 24K. At parati nila siya sabi yung gano'n, malambot na. Kaya hindi, parang hindi natin nakikita sa market yon Pero nakakatawa po, dito po sa mundo, pinag-aaksayahan natin ng pera po yan, di ba? Yung bedazzler nga eh, 3,999 Philippine pesos. Pero ang mga alahas po, di po ba? Pagkamahal-mahal. Ang nakakatawa po, pagdating po sa heaven, construction material po sila. Di ba? Uh, there was this joke that my dad shared to the congregation not too long ago. Oh, kasi para naaalala ko, ando pa tayo sa church noon eh. So it was not too long ago. In church natin sa, sa uh, Concepcion, masiguro five years ago, which is not too long ago para sa akin. <laughs> uh, meron nga daw pong isang lalaki, napakayaman niya, and he had sacks of gold. Tapos, um, Nung namatay siya, ay hindi, bago pala siya matamatay, inutos niya na gusto niya kasama yung kanyang mga ginto. And then when he reached heaven, so andun siya sa pearly gates, at andun daw po si San Pedro. Tayo mga krasyano, di po tayo naniniwala andun si San Pedro at kasama yung kanyang manok. Ano po yun? Sa mga Roman Catholics lang po yun. Sabi daw, so dala-dala niya yung kanyang mga ano, yung mga bagbag niyang mga ginto. Sabi daw ni San Pedro, oh, bakit yan may dalang aspalto? Kasi nga po sa heaven, it's all dazzling. It's made of the finest stones, most precious stones, and gold that is transparent like glass. So everybody, when you get to heaven, get ready to be bedazzled. And the last one, heaven is a treasure. This description came to me while I was devotioning about two weeks ago. Yung scripture po kasi dun sa aking Our Daily Bread devotion for that day was Matthew 13, 44. I felt like this needed to be added here. Sabi po dito, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. So ganun po ka-importante sa kanya ang heaven. Um, to be honest, I wasn't sure if this would fit the list. But I wanted to add it anyway because it would somehow round up all of the descriptions of heaven and how we should feel about it. 
heaven being a treasure is going to be the fulfillment or realization of everything that we could ever hope paradise would be. So, ang mga, nak, uh, mga nakakaalam at uh, na isa sa puso po yung description ng heaven, itong perfectong lugar na ito, na inanda ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo, it, this should be like a source of joy, a source of motivation, na one day we will go to a place where the difficulties of life here on earth would no longer matter. Kasi we're going to a place that is perfect. Something that uh, we've never seen before and something that would go beyond our expectations. Now that we have described heaven, let's move on to the second point, which is, who will be going to heaven? Alam niyo po, natatawa po ako kasi I've been a Christian since I was a kid. Pretty much, I was born in the church. Dahil nga po, pastor ang aking ama. At uh, alam ko po, growing up, parati pong itinuturo na hindi po ating kabutihan ng loob, hindi ang pagiging mabait, magiging mabuti, ang magpapapasok po sa atin sa kaharian ng Diyos. And yet, ang dami ko pa rin po mga naririnig ng mga Kristiyano na naniniwala na all it takes is to be good, to be nice, para po makapasok sa kaharian ng Diyos. Kung babasahin po natin ng Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, sabi po, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you. It is a gift of God. It is not from works. So, hindi po yung ating charity sa iba. Hindi po yung pagpapakabait natin, pagigmabuti natin sa iba. So, no one may boast. For we are His handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. It's important to bring up again how the thief, one of the thieves crucified with Jesus on a cross, I pinangakuan ng citizenship ng ating Panginoon. So he lived most of his life as a criminal. And yet, at the, in that perfect moment, na in-acknowledge niya ang Panginoon bilang uh, totoong Diyos. And he was very humble during that time. Na he even uh, rebuked the other thief na kasama nila nung minamak ito ng Panginoon. Na pinami sa kanya ng Panginoon, Today you will be with me in paradise. Iyon po ang nakasabi, nakasabi, na nasusulat sa Luke 23, 42-43, ang sabi po dito. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This thief no longer had the time to turn his life around. And dahil hindi na po siya mababautismuhan, pero iyon po ang pinakako ng Panginoon. Kasi hindi po ang ating mga gawa ang magliligtas sa atin, ang magliligtas po sa atin, ay ang pagtanggap natin sa ating Panginoong Heso Kristo bilang ating tagapagligtas at Diyos. Uh, special case po siya, pero the rest of us who still have, you know, many years to our lives, we are expected to make some changes to our lives kasi ang salvation po, at least sa akin pong paniniwala, like I mentioned last time, nung tumayo po ako dito sa inyong harapan, maaari pong mawala ito sa atin. Di po ba? Totoo po ang pagbabackslide. Pero sa atin na uh, nais pong makasama ang ating Panginoon Diyos, uh, masecure natin ang ating mga pangalan sa aklat ng buhay, ang in-expect po ng Panginoon sa atin ay mabuhay po tayo sa kanyang turo. Sabi po ng Panginoon, be holy for I am holy. It's going to be very difficult but uh, we need to do that. Kasi nga po, nawawala ang salvation. Iyon Personally po, iyon ang aking paniniwala. Katulad po ng asin na nawawala ng alat. Hindi po ba? At uh, alam ko, may, there are Christian groups na hindi naniniwala sa backsliding. Kasi sabi na, hindi nyo naman talaga tinanggap ang Panginoon in the first place. Pero, iba po ang sinasabi sa Biblia tungkol dyan. But that's going to be for a different, <laughs> for a different message. Let's move on na. Let's focus on what we can do and what the Lord expects of us as future citizens of the kingdom of God. Let's start with number one. Use the Bible as your life's manual. This isn't, uh, this isn't anything new. Parati po nating na may mention ito. Nagagamitin po natin ang salita ng Diyos bilang manual po natin para sa ating pamumuhay. Kasi lahat po ng instructions ng Panginoon ay nakasulat na po sa Biblia. Sabi nga, He presents them in parables. He enumerates them in laws. 
he presents them in dialogues with with people who have disobeyed and those who have expressed na gusto nila sumunod sa Panginoon hindi lamang sa hindi lamang sa pakikipag-usap po ng ating Diyos uh, Panginoong Jesus na nandito siya sa lupa uh, nangyari rin po yan pakipag-usap ng mga apostol sa mga nais mag-aral na salita ng Diyos sa mga tao dito sa mga propeta lalo na po dito sa lumang tipan Na, nakikita po natin talaga yung mga instructions ng ating Panginoon. Remember nga po yung the parable of the ten virgins. That's one of the best sources of information on how to prepare for the kingdom of God. First yung ano, syempre yung the return of the of the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. Pero saan po ba papunta yun? Di, ba? Di po ba papunta sa heaven? Most importantly, the Bible details how the Lord Jesus lived. At sino po ba ang dapat nating gayahin? Hindi po ang inyong pastor, hindi po ang mga teachers dito sa church. Siguro po kung magagaya natin po sila, dahil po sila ay gumagaya po sa ating Panginoon. Pero ultimately, ang susundin po natin ay ang ating Diyos Ama. Kaya nga po dito sa church, parati pong sinasabi, tumingin kayo sa Panginoon, huwag sa inyong mga katabi, Kasi kung yung mga katabi ninyo, ang parati nyo titingnan ang kanilang mga buhay, ayan nga, magkakandatisod-tisod kayo. Pero kung sa Panginoon po tayo nakatingin, hindi po tayo matitisod. I would also like to point out the fact that I am able to deliver this message here is because of the Bible. Saan naman po ako kukuha ng mga ituturo ko sa inyo? Hindi naman po ako basta-basta na, ano, na pwede humugot sa hangin ng kaalaman. Kailangan ko po mag-refer sa Bible. That's why nga, uh, ang dami po natin sinishare ng mga memory verses dito sa church. Sabi rin po kasi sa 2 Timothy 3.16, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Christians, uh, I believe that a lot of us have been in the faith for a long time already. But, have you read the Bible? <laughs> have you read the Bible from cover to cover? I am proud to say that I've already, uh, I've already done that. Kaya nga lang po, it came very late in life. I started to read the Bible thoroughly when I was, when I was sick. And you know why I needed to do that? Because I needed answers. I needed answers to how angry I felt during that time. I had I needed answers kung, kasi I knew of a lot of uh, Bible stories. I knew the story of, uh, of Job, of Jonah. And uh, for some reason, I had questions. I felt like, you know, I was somewhat similar to those characters because I was suffering. And there were so many things that I did not approve of. And um, I did not have the clarity to reason with my questions. So when I started reading the Bible, Slowly, the answers came. And of course, you know, it helped a lot that my father was a pastor. For the uh, questions that he couldn't provide me with answers or that I couldn't find in the Bible because my, you know, I was close-minded. Parati pong paalala sa akin ng aking ama. Kanya, ako tao lang. At saka, andito pa tayo sa lupa. Hindi lahat ng may kinalaman sa Diyos ay malalaman natin. Kaya nga, tipo, we need to look forward to heaven so that when we get to heaven, we can ask those questions and God can provide us the clarity that we need. And then again, ito nga po ang kagandahan sa heaven eh. Yung mga kabigatan natin dito sa lupa, baka hindi na rin ganun ka-importante. Di po ba? Pero yun po, pwede natin gawin yung pagdating po natin sa kaharian ng Diyos. And another thing why we need to read the Bible, kasi... We already live in a very deceitful time. Ang dami pong fake news. At saka ito po yung panahon na tipong parang my truth. Di ba isa lang naman ng katotohanan? My truth. Ibig sabihin nun, pag sinabi natin my truth, meron ka sarili mong interpretasyon. Hindi ba your truth? This is my truth, your truth, and then the truth. The truth is the only thing that matters. Um, Ma-share ko lang po sa inyo. I came upon this uh, YouTube video of this supposed pastor. Hanapin nyo. 
<laughs> um, this is a progressive pastor. His name is Brandon. Hindi po Brandon na Brandon. Brandon Robertson. He's a progressive pastor in his, and he's a pro LGBTQ. And uh, he has stood at the pulpit of a church to use those who have turned to a lifestyle God never approved of as an example of dying to oneself. Sabihin ko po sa kanya, iko-quote ko po siya ha. Talaga pinakinggan ko siya ng husto eh. Sabi niya, maybe minorities, sexual and gender minorities, have something to teach the church about dying to self, about new life, about that's where he was cut off. Uh, just as he was declaring such heretic claims, thunderstruck, I think twice, and the lights inside the church flickered. Mahanap niyo po yan sa YouTube. Brandon Robertson, hanapin niyo po siya. God is not mocked. At itong taong po ito ay nag-share nag, uh, nag siya, nag-spread siya ng fake gospel. And we do not want to be spreaders of fake gospel. Baka mamaya, ay pastor siya, mapaniwalaan. If you read the Bible, you will not be deceived. What if a person like this suddenly comes here at church and then worms his way to the front of a church and utters such heretic claims? Would you be able to counter it? Would you be able to say, that's not written in the Bible? Hindi niyo po magagawa yung kung hindi po kayo nag, nagbubukas ng Biblia. And I would also like to share this one thing. I like Stephen Colbert. I'm not sure if you, you're familiar with him. He's a late night talk show host in the US. And he's a Roman Catholic. He's a devout Roman Catholic. And I think for one, I, I think uh, there's this one episode wherein he said na the Lord is uh, never mentioned anything about homosexuality. And I turned right away to the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I turned to the New Testament. I think I found it in Acts and also in John. Who have the audacity, the gall, to utter such claims. Kung kayo po ay hindi nagbabasa ng Biblia, madali pong maniwala. At kapag ganyan po, Baka maging spreader rin po kayo noong fake gospel na yon. Kaya church, read the Bible, avoid deception, do right, and really secure your place in paradise. Two, lead a life of worship. God is seeking true worshipers. Namensyo ko na po kanina. Because heaven is a city built for worship. True worshipers are those who are fit for heaven. Kasi nga po, it's going to be worship non-stop. Kung dito po sa church, eh, buriang na buriang na po kayo doon sa dalawang oras ng ating pagpupuri at uh, labas po kayo ng labas at uh, dilat po kayo ng dilat, tingin po kayo ng tingin sa inyong paligid, that's not worship. Pero maski po yung pagkanta, pagtugtog, pagsayaw, at um, Maski nga po yung pagpipreach dito na, hindi pa po yun kompletang worship. Ang sabi po, ang kompletang worship includes our lives. Our lives should be worship to the Lord. When people look at our lives, do they see the glory of God or the salvation that we have received from our Lord Jesus Christ? We don't want to be the people that God was referring to in Isaiah 29.13. Sabi po sa Isaiah 29, 13, the Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. Kaya rin po yung mga paulit-ulit na panalangin. Pamilyar po ako dyan because I studied in, a, in an exclusive school for girls uh, which was run by Benedictine nuns. So, Paulit ulit, Angelus, 3 o'clock habit, lalo na pa yung month of the rosary. Pagandahan pa kami ng mga rosaryo. Memorize mo yung iba-ibang mga mysteries. Pero ano po ba ang kahalagahan nun? Yung ganun po, worship po ba yun? Hindi po. Kailangan po nakakita po sa ating buhay. At saka galing po talaga, taos po sa ating mga puso. Sa lahat po ng aspeto ng ating pamumuhay, dapat dapat tayo po ay nakikitang nag-worship. Itinataas natin ang 
pangalan ng ating Diyos, na maski yung mga ibang tao na hindi pa nakakakilala sa Kanya, hindi maitatanggi ang kaluwalhatian ng ating Panginoon na kumbaga nag-radiate po sa ating mga buhay. Number three, remind yourself that life here is temporary. Alam niyo po when I was studying in college, because I studied early childhood care and development, one of the important topics we had was about attachment. How to develop it, yung tipong how to nurture attachment, and uh, uh, its impact, cognitive impact on children, at kung ano-ano pa. Kaya po tayong lahat, lahat po tayo, meron po tayong sense of attachment. Maski po yung mga hermits, meron po silang sense of attachment. Siguro sa mga bagay, sa mga pinagtrabahuhan nila, sila po ay attached doon. Tiyatawag rin po natin yung pamisan, pagiging sentimental, kasi nga po yung pagiging attached natin. Pero ang lahat ng mga bagay po na ito ay panandalian lamang. Sabi po sa Psalm 39.5, You have made my days a mere handbreadth. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Everyone is but a breath, even those who seem secure. Well, it's important to value such things because we work hard for them. And of course, God placed such people in our lives. We should not place our security on them. We should be able to let them go. Ganyan po ang buhay kristyano. Marami po tayong kailangan i-let go. Katulad po sa story ng ating Panginoong Jesus at sa kanyang rich man. Doon po sa Mark 10 verses 17 to 22. Basahin po natin. As Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running up to him, knelt down and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder, you must not commit adultery, you must not steal, you must not testify falsely, you must not cheat anyone, honor your father and your mother. Teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. There is still one thing you haven't done. He told him, go and sell your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this man, at this the man's face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Are we like that rich man? We can let go of our earthly possessions, of our earthly attachments. Alam niyo po yung isa dos mga common stories about being loyal to a company. Tipo para you devote so many years working for a company. Sometimes you forgo your leaves, kasi ang paniniwala mo kailang ang kanang kompanya mo. But once you express your desire to resign, hindi ka pa nakakapag last day, napalitan ka na. Hindi po ba ganun na kalakaran sa mga kumpanya? Hindi po tayo indispensable sa kanila. Pero sa Panginoon po, importanteng importante po tayo. Kaya nga He sent His Son to die for our sins. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to go to heaven because our good works, sabi nga po kanina, di ba? Hindi iyon ang hindi iyon ang magpapapasok sa atin sa kaharian ng Diyos. Yung pag, kailangan po natin talaga tanggapin ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. There's nothing that we can do for ourselves para po masecure natin ang pangalan natin sa, sa libro ng buhay. Kailangan po natin tanggapin ng ating Panginoong Jesus. And isa pa pong biting reality, lalo na po noong pandemic, no matter how rich you are, you cannot bargain with life and death. Hindi po, they're beyond our control. Hindi po natin hawak ang ating mga buhay. Kung gusto pa ng Panginoon na pahabayan pa ang buhay, gagawin niya. Pero if it's your time, I don't believe that uh, we can bargain with the Lord because His timing is always perfect. Kaya yeah, yung mga bagay po na parang we consider very important here on earth, Hindi natin maiwan-iwan, maski po ang ating mga pamilya, alam niyo, pwede po natin sila isurrender sa Panginoon. Kasi kapag tayo po ay naado na sa kalangitan, hindi po, ano ha, uh, sabihin po, mapaaga ang ating pag-uwi sa kalangitan. <laughs> hindi po tayo makasama ng ating Panginoon sa rapture. Um, we can rest in the promises of God. We can rest on the promises that God has given in His, in His Word. Ang Panginoon po ang mag-iingas sa anay. Hindi po natin pwede pang hawakan ang ating mga sarili. At hindi rin po tayo pwede mang hawak doon sa kung anong meron tayo. Kailangan po lahat ay kaya natin ibigay sa able hands ng ating Panginoon. 
And we should be able to look forward to heaven. Kasi po, it's going to be perfection. Wala na po tayong hahanapin pa. At pag po tayo, tapos we still care about the world, alam po natin, malalaman natin yung full extent ng kapangyarihan talaga ng Panginoon. At saka kung bakit dapat natin lahat ay isinosurrender sa Kanya. And number four, share the good news of salvation. If you're excited to go home to heaven, make sure that you are sharing the good news of salvation. This should be a priority. Sabi po sa salita ng Panginoon, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Sabi po yes, Matthew 24, 14. Preparing for the kingdom of God means making sure that we've done our part in sharing the gospel. We need to be heaven's recruiters. After all, the best things in the world, the best things in life can be found in heaven. And they should be enjoyed by as many people as possible. Hindi naman, dapat hindi po tayo nagdadamot <laughs> sa, ano, sa, sa heaven. We should encourage as many people as possible. Kung meron pong nawawala, nawawala po sa church, hanapin po natin. At uh, ipaalala po natin sa kanilang salita ng Panginoon. And mas important po, yung mga hindi pa nakakakilala sa ating Diyos. Alam niyo po, paminsan iniisip natin, baka yung mga tribo lang, ang mga hindi nakakakilala sa yung mga sa kung anong lupalip. Ano ba yung ano? Yung hindi pa na-reach talaga na civilization? Yung malapit sa India na island? Maski yun po siguro, um, hindi lang po sila yung mga hindi pa nakakarinig ng salita ng Diyos. Paminsa po yung mga iba yung relihiyon. Di po ba? Mas malapit po yun sa atin tsaka mas accessible. Yung iba po talaga yung kanilang pinapaniwalaan. Um, ako po, madalas po ako, maka-Instagram, yun ang edad ko. Mahilig sa pictures. Ayoko nagbabasa ng kung ano-ano. Doon ko po nalaman na marami pa rin po walang mga pagano ngayon. Mga pagans, they worship the sun, they worship the trees, mga ganun po sila. Um, and of course, yung mga iba pong religions, talagang hindi nila kilala ang Panginoon. Uh, nung nakatira po kami sa Bible, sa Bible, <laughs> sa Baguio, <laughs> uh, meron po mga namamalimus doon ng mga bata noon. Akala po namin mga igrot sila. Pero nung kinausap po ng housemate ko, sabi niya, taga saan ka ba? Ganyan. Tapos sabi niya, taga Mindanao nga daw siya. Tapos yung, ano, yung housemate ko po, um, masigasig po yun, mag-share mag ng salita ng Panginoon. Kung naka, naalala niyo po si na Sister Irma, pamangkin po niya yun, yung housemate ko, si Jenny. Um, tinanong niya, sabi niya, kilala mo ba si Jesus? At sabi niya, hindi. At sabi niya, sa ka ba sa Mindanao? Akala niya, Muslim. Pero kung mga Muslim po, kilala, ang mga, kilala pa rin si Jesus, ang pagkakaalam ko. I, I believe si Jamie has a friend who's a Muslim. Um, so, kilala nila si Jesus. Kaya nga lang, ang pagkakakilala nila kay Jesus ay isang propeta. So, sabi nung bata, maranaw po ako. Ako narinig ko yung mga maranaw, pero hindi ko alam ko ano yung religion ba nila o ano. Pero sabi niya, hindi niya kilala si Jesus. So, pamisan, malapit lang po talaga sa atin na kailangan din po makilala ang Panginoong Jesus. Lalo po yun, bata. Mas madali pong turuan ang mga bata sa totoo lang. They're more open. And also because they're in need of love, they are always happy to know that uh, there's someone who loves them greatly. At yung mga ganun po na regalo sa atin ng Panginoon, dapat po ba itinatago natin para lang sa ating mga sarili? Iti po parang very exclusive and jewels fellowship and ministries. Di ba dapat po na share natin to as many people as possible? Kasi po, tayo, maganda po yung pupuntahan natin. Pero baka nakakalimutan natin yung pupuntahan ng mga hindi nakakakilala sa ating Panginoong Yesus ay napakasamang lugar. Sabo po sa Matthew 13:41 to 42 The Son of Man will send out His angels and they will weed out of His kingdom every cause of sin and all who practice lawlessness. And they will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So hell has been described as a fiery furnace where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
And the thing is, it will be an eternal situation. If we have love for mankind, we shouldn't want them to go to hell. Di po ba? Sabi nga po yung ano? Sorry. Di ba magnanakaw? Kung meron siyang anak, ang ibibigay niya po ba ay ahas? Di po, di ba? So tayo na nakakilala ng pagmamahal ng ating Panginoon Diyos, Through His Word, dapat ganun po, isha-share rin po natin yung kanyang salita. I-express natin ang ating pagmamahal sa iba by sharing His Word. Kasi ang dami pong magagandang promises ng Panginoon. Merong hope for the hopeless, discovery of a father who would love us, who set His Son to die for our sins. Marami pong nangangailangan ng ganoon. At saka, yun nga po, merong soul winner's crown na naghihintay sa atin sa kalangitan. Paul spoke about it, di ba, di po ba, dun sa 2.19, Thessalonians 2.19 to 20, for what is our hope? And he was talking to the people of Thessalonica. Um, doon po sila nag-minister sa mga tao doon. Siya, si Silas, si Timothy, at saka si Luke. Naging burden po nila talaga yung mga tao dun sa Thessalonica. So let us not be ashamed of the gospel and we should do our best to share it to as many people as possible. Paminsan yung iba minamock yung ating ano yun, no? yung pagsashare natin ng, ng verses, sa Bible, sa kung saan saan. Paminsan they find it very corny when we quote the Bible. Pero let's just continue doing that. And uh, kung hindi man po natin makita yung, yung results na gusto natin, pwede po natin ipagkatiwala sa Panginoon. Ang Panginoon po ang mangungusap sa kanila. Basta tayo po, we do our bit. And number five, live in obedience to God. God is our King. In times of old, the King also had some control over the personal lives of the citizens. There was abuse of power, syempre, kapag ganun po katindi ang kanyang kapangyarihan. But that's how things were in a monarchy. Actually, monarchical absolutism po yung tawag doon. The difference with our king is that he is God. He created the heavens and the earth. And he is the one and true almighty. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, his one and only begotten son. And our king truly only wants the best for us. And we can trust that. Kanina nga po, I believe si Obet ay binention yung Romans 8.28. Sabi doon, And we know that all things, that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Living in obedience to God, no matter how inconvenient it is and how mocked we are by the world, is the true mark of being an heir of heaven. Sabi po sa Romans 8.17, Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I have a quote from the preacher Charles Spurgeon. Sabi po ni Charles Spurgeon, There are no crown wearers in heaven who were not cross bearers on earth. Di po ba? And here's an all-time favorite. Matthew 16:24. Marami pong nakakaalam nito, lalo na po yung may alam ng kids' praise. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Christians, that is how we behave as true heirs of heaven, by following and obeying God, no matter the cost. And six, I will end with this. Remember that heaven is the eternal place of everything good. Life here on earth can be very hard for so many people. And um, sabi po dito, I found this study. In 20 to 30, 2013, more than 574,000 or 3% of Filipino youth tried ending their life. 2013 po to, ha? In 2021, the percentage rose to 7.5%, which is equivalent to 1.5 million youth with such experience. Ito po ay finding ng Young Adult Fertility and Sexuality Study. 
ng University of the Philippines Population Institute na funded po ng Department of Health. Tayo po mga Christiano, we are not spared from hardships, hindi po ba? Kaya nga po may nampapatotoo po sa atin, may, kakulo, excuse me, may kakulangan po sa pera, um, nagkakasakit, naka-experience ng aksidente, loss of somebody that they love. We all go through hardships. A good chunk of them do not even, are not even connected to, to our faith. Hindi po directly connected sa ating faith. Ako po personally, yung aking pong chronic pains na naipagpatotoo ko na rin po, alam niyo po, I feel quite sad whenever I have like severe flare-ups. Kasi parang you realize na diba as you're getting older, I keep on getting more. <laughs> I keep on getting more pains. Sabi nga po, uh, parang uh, ano, when I'm in a bad mood especially, and then I get my pains. I am reminded of how many things I have lost. I used to be able to dance. I can't do that anymore. I used to be able to run. I can't do that anymore. Pinaglolokohan nga po namin kasi we ended up watching Train to Busan. Sabi ko, ay nako, kanina pa ako patay kung kasali ko dyan kasi hindi po ako makakatakbo talaga. Tapos, um, ay, ito, very recently, I really cannot sing anymore. They used to ask me, tipo, bakit hindi ka na nagkakanta sa music ministry? And uh, magyayabang po ako ng kaunti. When I was younger, I studied classical voice at the University of the Philippines. And uh, I can clear almost four octaves. Kasi po ganun yung training. Pero nawala po yun because of my thyroid disorder. And I, as I keep on getting older, I keep on losing a lot of my abilities. Um, memorization. Medyo nahihirapan na po ako dyan. Kaya po nakakatawa dito sa church. And I'm still able to teach, so I am required to memorize. So even if it is difficult, I, I get to do that. And also, I've reached this point in my life wherein uh, ang consideration ko po, lalo na po kung aalis ng bahay, ay hindi na po yung availability of, of time. Alam niya, meron ba ako schedule? Hindi ganoon. Hindi po parang ayos ba ang pakiramdam ko dito sa mga ganitong panahon? Ganun po ang tingin ko na ngayon sa akin kalendaryo. Pag tingin niya, ay mukhang may sakit ako sa ganitong ano, medyo mababa ang immune system ko dito sa mga panahon na ito. Ganun na po ang nagiging consideration ko. Kaya nga po this, uh, the week leading to today, my mom kept on reminding me, oh, huwag ka gaano magtatrabaho. Baka sumakit ang paa mo, hindi ka makatayo. Oh, huwag kang magaganyan. Kasi baka mamaya yung mga mag-flare up yung mga cubital at kung ano-ano mga, mga syndrome-syndrome dyan. So, I have reached that point. And, ma ano po, malungkot na parang umabot na ako sa ganoon. Sabi ko, hindi pa naman ako ganun katanda. Bakit naman ganito na karami tong, tong sakit ko? It used to be like one pain a day or a combination of pains and now it's a cornucopia. Another vocabulary word, cornucopia of pains. So, masakit ang paa, masakit din ang bewang. Masakit ang dikod dahil ang bewang ay... Ganun po siya. Pero, ayun nga po, what I thank the Lord for that is, one day we will go to heaven. Di po ba? All these pains, this corruptible body will be no more. And the thing that I love most about it is that, um, aside from no longer experiencing pains, no longer crying over these, these uh, physical sufferings. Nako. Yun nga, we will be reunited with the people we love. Di ba? Yung tipo parang we lost them and we cried over them and every day we miss them. Alam niyo naman po siguro kung ano yung sinasabi ko, ano? I miss my... Hala! Naubo na nga ako kanina, tas ngayon may tears pa. Um, I miss my dad so much. And the great thing about, you know, going to heaven is that I am sure that he is there. And, you know, that's why I yearn for heaven so much. Because uh, we live in such a disappointing time. You know you have your loved ones and you cannot rely on them. But when we get to heaven, you know, all of these connections that are somewhat disappointing, they will be no more because our connection is really with God. And could God disappoint us? 
Never, right? Dinisappoint po ba kayo ng Panginoon? Kasi maski yung mga iniisip natin ng mahirap ng mga bagay, lahat po yan ay may purpose sa ating Panginoon. Yung pagkamatay po ng daddy ko, paminsan, it's going to be two years soon. Um, ang hirap po, lalo yung paminsan Wednesday or Friday, I miss him so much. Sometimes I ask the Lord, ba't naman napaaga? Gusto namin sabay-sabay kami. Kaya na nga, those things are out of our hands, hindi po ba? Pero, alam niyo po, nakakatuwa, yung pinapakita ng Panginoon na, ito, heaven awaits. And we should yearn for that because we will be reunited with the saints, with all those whom we lost, na mahal na mahal natin. And there, there will be no more crying. There will be no more pain. All of the things that burden us will be no more. Kaya, iyon po ang ating pag-focusan parate. Let us be royal. Um, no, not royal. Let us be loyal. <laughs> Sorry, my thoughts are running away from me. Let us be loyal to the prospect of heaven. Maging loyal po tayo dun sa pupuntahan natin. Kasi po ang mundo, hindi po talaga makaka-compare. Hindi ko po alam kung bakit yung iba pinipili itong mundo. Eh, ito po ang sinasabi ng Panginoon. The foundation of a uh, gawa sa precious stones, the purest gold. Merong mga naghihintay na korona sa atin. Ito nga, we will be reunited with the saints and no more of the problems that we experience here on earth. Wala na nung mga yun. Every day will be a good day with our Almighty God. So keep your eyes on heaven, the prize, the treasure, and our eternal home. At ito po dito po ako conclude It's scary how still so many people live with the thought that there is no heaven and hell. Pamisa nga when they utter, eh di lahat tayo pumunta sa impyerno. Ganun-ganun na lang. Ako, I cannot even bring myself to joke about it. Kasi alam ko na totoo ang impyerno. Kasing totoo siya ng kalangitan. Sabi ko, pa, how can you joke about that? And they're gonna live however they want. Lalo po pag nakakita kayo ng news sa Amerika, shinare ko nga po kay Eunice, yung mga nag identify na sila ay dragon, sila ay aso. Hindi po parang ano ba nangyari sa, ano, sa, uh, sa humanity. They wish to be respected. But they're behaving in such an insane manner that they want everybody to participate in the fantasy that they have. Pero nananatili pa rin. Ako, nalulungkot ako doon. Pero kagala ko po, nananatili pa rin sa marami yung clear idea na kung ano ang mabuti at kung ano ang masama. Meron pa rin distinction kung ano tama, kung ano ang mali. At isa po yun sa mga proweba na meron po talagang buhay beyond the life that we live here. Otherwise, kung wala pong heaven, everything will be relative. There are two kinds of life after here on earth. One, in eternal good and glory. Yung isa, punishment and suffering. Heaven exists because of our good God. Tandaan po niyo yun. Kaya choose heaven and be ready to go when it's time. Christians, no more dilly-dallying. No more think that it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen later. We must all live as if God is going to come any second now. Heaven is coming. Jesus is coming. So we sing it all the time here. But are we prepared to meet him? I remember a thief in the night. Yung pastor ang naiwan doon sa church. Di po ba? Yung mga miyembro, marami, nakasama. Pero ang pastor, hindi. Posible pong mangyari yun. Lalo na ko po kung naging routine na sa atin yung pagpunta sa church. So, isipin po natin, are we prepared to meet our maker? Or do we still engage 
so much with the world that our lives fail to reflect the salvation that we have received or the Christ whom we follow, we profess to follow. Let us always search our hearts and make sure that when Jesus comes, we are indeed ready to go home to heaven with Him. Maraming salamat po.